Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Maureen Demler and I serve as deacon at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Wednesday in the third week of Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson comes from the letter of Paul to the Romans, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here ends the reading. The word justify is a legal term. Behind that word is a courtroom setting. And in this case, God is the judge who has on the docket before him the guilt or innocence of every person ever born. Paul has already made it clear that the guilt of all humanity is not in question. But here today is an amazing declaration. Despite our clear guilt, God the judge declares his people righteous. This happens not only because of God's great love, but because God has demonstrated his justice through the death of Jesus. When someone believes in Jesus, God gives that person the righteousness of Christ and in so doing declares them to be right before God. In other words, God declaring our innocence is not an exception to justice because justice was fully dispensed on Jesus instead of on the sinner who repents. This is truly amazing grace. Because God's people have been justified by faith, they have eternal life and peace with God. Of course, if someone can only have peace with God through faith, then the opposite is also true. Outside of a personal faith commitment, all people stand in eternal conflict with God. Could there be anything more terrifying than to be considered an enemy of God? But apart from Christ, that's a status of all people. It is not a relationship of neutrality, but of hostility. For all people are born under God's just judgment for sin. However, through Jesus and the gospel, the unthinkable happens. 
God grants reconciliation to those who turn to Jesus in repentance and trust. The word reconciliation means change or exchange. True reconciliation involves a change in the attitudes of both parties who had been previously estranged or at odds. Through Christ, sinners are not left as beggars on the doorstep of heaven, hoping God will somehow open the door. Instead, his attitude toward those who believe has been wholly changed because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. His wrath and justice have been satisfied, and his people are made right with him, based on the righteousness of Christ. God sees his people not as former enemies, but as dearly beloved and adopted children. Like the father in the parable of the lost son, God's people are welcomed home, not as slaves, but with celebration as returning sons and daughters. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sundays. If you are unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.